praise the living Jesus. If you're happy to be in the presence of God, put your hands together for our Lord Jesus. If you believe today is your day, put your hands together for our Lord Jesus. Yes, greet your neighbors, say you are welcome to the presence of God. You are welcome to the presence of God. Yes, viewers all over the world, we welcome you in Jesus' name. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Yes, the Bible says that the essence of true worship is in honoring God with what our lives depend on. So once again, I greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yes, how many of us love the Lord with all our hearts? How many of us love the Lord with all our strength? With all our quality time, how many of us? All our loyalty and our substance, how many of us? Well, it is good to see the raised hands, but you know the answer to this question is more of the heart and a call for self-examination. Ask yourself, do I really love God? Ask yourself, do I really love God? Now ask your neighbor, do you really love God? You can see that the answer to the question is more of the heart and a call for self-examination. You see, God is concerned about you. God is concerned about you. The Bible says he's busy planting the seeds of what you are becoming if you love in truth. In John 17 verse 18, Jesus said to all his disciples, believers, Christians, as the Father hath sent me, so send I you to love one another just as I love you. This statement was a kind of commission in all believers, thus giving them a pattern of operation. In other words, Jesus was simply saying, as my father has commissioned me to be a solution to everyone in trouble, so have I commissioned you as a solution. Every person you meet today is trying to change their life in some way, but they don't just know how to. Some want their health to be improved. Others want financial freedom. No matter your status in life, are you rich or poor? No matter your status in life, are you strong or weak? Are you educated or uneducated? Someone is waiting for a lifeline from you. For you to put a quality smile on their face. Therefore, do not allow your social, political, economic, cultural, or religious background to rob you of your love for Christ. I mean, your love for one another. Today, we claim we love God, yet our heart is full of offense, making it difficult to love one another. And that is why Jesus says in Matthew 25, he said, I was hungry, you gave me no food. I was thirsty, you gave me no water. I was a stranger, you did not take me in. I was naked, you did not clothe me. I was sick in prison, you did not visit me. 
on that occasion, his disciple asked, Master, when were you naked? When were you thirsty? And when were you hungry? And Jesus replied, When you stood in the midst of the lowly, listen to this. When you stood in the midst of the lowly, those who could not help themselves. Maybe you only imagine you are in the company of the poor, the uneducated, the destitute, the weak, and disadvantaged people. Don't be surprised. When you eventually realize, perhaps too late, that it was Jesus himself whom you denied. That is why I tell you that do not allow your social, political, economic, religious, and cultural background to rob you of your love for Christ. I mean, your love for one another. Today, we all desire to reap. But the question is, what have we planted? If you plant love, the Bible says you will reap love. Because there is no loving in truth. That does not express itself in giving. There is no giving in truth without receiving. The Bible says that true blessing actually comes from giving. If you truly possess love, which is one of the fruits of the Spirit, the nature of God, you will not look to the other side when your fellow brothers are in need. This is compromise. Many today believe that they can only give out of abundance when they have surplus, when they have plenty, when they are healed, when they are blessed, when they have breakthrough. But this is a false belief. Ask the poor widow in the book of 1 Kings chapter 17, and she will tell you that everyone has something to give, no matter how small or big. And that is why Prophet E.B. Joshua says, and I quote, your idea of if only I add money keeps robbing you of your blessings. Your idea of if I were strong keep robbing you of your strength. Your idea of if I were free keeps robbing you of your freedom. Your idea of if, if I had money, I would give to the poor. I would help the weak. If I am strong, I will help the less privileged. I will help the weak. The danger here is, if you fail to help from the little God has blessed you with, more may never come. If you fail to help from the little strength that God has given you, more may never come. Brethren, help and be helped when you help for God's sake. Tell your neighbor, helped and be helped when you help for God's sake. Love and receive love when you love for God's sake. This will bring me to the title of my message, The Secret of Abundance. Tell your neighbor the secret of abundance. The secret of abundance. Yes. God is concerned about our growth. Yes, quickly turn with me to the book of Galatians. And that will be our first proof test for this message. The book of Galatians, chapter 6. And let us take our reading from verse 6. Are you there? Let him who is taught the word share in all good things 
with him who teaches. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows to his flesh, will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the Spirit, will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. Verse 9. And let us not grow weary while doing good. For in due season we shall reap if we do not lose hearts. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially to those who are of the household of faith. Let us read that verse 10 together. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially to those who are of the household of faith. Praise the Lord. The Bible says we must do good to all, especially to those of the household of faith. Those who are to receive must learn how to plant. Anyone who plants, the Bible says, is conscious of the future. Because he will find help if he ever falls on hard times. Anyone who plants is conscious of the future. Because he will find help if he ever falls on hard times. Brethren, today is for planting. And tomorrow is for reaping. Patience is an important tool when you are planting. You must wait for what you plant to mature, surely your seed will come back to you in a hundredfold. Just as the Bible says in the book of Psalm 37 verse 25, that the fruit of the righteous extends to his children. So if you realize that what you do today, whether good or bad, extend to your children, then you will be careful of what you are doing now. If you are conscious that whatever you do today, whether good or bad, extends to your fruit, you will be conscious of whatever you are doing now. Whatever situation you may be facing, if you are to know a successful life, you must learn to plant your strength, your forgiveness, your mercy, your kindness, your faithfulness, and your love. You must plant them. Because God is not so much concerned about what we have to give as the manner in which we give it. If you are to know a successful life, then you must learn to plant your strength, your forgiveness, your kindness, your faithfulness, your mercy, your favor, your love. You ask the widow in the book of Mark 12, and she will tell you, the giving is a real privilege when it is done in a proper attitude. The book of Mark 12 captures the irony of a situation where a poor widow is exalted far and above the high and mighty in the society, all because of her selfless generosity. The Bible says she was one of those without any legal, political, social, or economic stature. But Jesus noticed her as she gave a true offering. Jesus 
Jesus noticed her as she gave her true offering, brethren. Even though she was in dear need, but the Bible says she never heard back. Her action shows an example of sacrificial giving. She was the only one who understood the principle of unlimited love and faith. Let someone say unlimited love. Unlimited love and faith. She was the only one who understood the principle of unlimited love and faith. A poor widow. God is most honored in a sacrificial giving. True giving is sacrificial indeed. The word sacrifice does not suggest a bed of roses. When you give, when you release forgiveness, sometimes it will cost you some pain to do so. Sacrifice does not suggest a bed of roses. When you sacrifice, you must feel the pain. It is better not to give than to give what is not important to you. The Bible says that God is most honored by our sacrificial giving. But he's dishonored by our offering of convenience. We want to do it at our time. We want to do it when we wish to do it. We want to do it in our own way. Brethren, asked Joseph in the book of Genesis chapter 41, when you have your time, you read. Ask Joseph in that book of Genesis 41, and he will tell you that whatever that is in your hand right now is capable of changing the course of your life. Whatever that is in your hand right now is capable of changing the course of your life. When he found himself in the prison, the Bible says he never waited for a more convenient time to show himself as a commissioned solution provider. Even in pain, even in suffering, whatever situation you may be facing, brethren, whether you are happy or not, you must always remember that weeping must not hinder your sowing. No matter what your situation looks like, no matter how you feel, brethren, weeping must not hinder your sowing. Remember, the beauty of life does not depend on how happy you are, how joyful you are, but how happy others can be because of you. This was what Joseph realized. He realized that sowing seeds in faith is using what God has given to obtain what God has promised. And that is why he released forgiveness even when he found himself in the prison. Joseph released forgiveness. The Bible says his gift, his talent, usher him to the throne. His gift, his talent, usher him to his divine destiny. It therefore implies that there is no one that God has created without a gift. There is no one that God has created without a talent. Brethren, your care to the lonely, viewers all over the world, your concern to the weak, your forgiveness you show to others might be what they need for their recovery. And at the same time, that might be what you need to plant to discover your own destiny. 
the love you give to the needy, the compassion you show, the concern you give, the forgiveness you release to others, that might be what you need to discover your divine destiny. And that might be what they need to discover themselves. That may be what they need for their own recovery. It might be what you need to plant, to discover your own destiny. If you say you are weak, don't be surprised to see those who are weaker than you. And if you say you are poor, don't be surprised to see those who are poorer than you. Whatever that is in your hand right now is what God will use to bless others through you. I mean, someone is somewhere in need of what you have in your hand for their survival. The Bible says it is true we may not be equally gifted, but God has done it in such a way that we all have some strength to contribute to one another. You begin to succeed with your life when hurts and problems of others begin to matter to you. Tell your neighbor, you begin to succeed with your life. You begin to succeed with your life when hurts and problems of others begin to matter to you. Remember the title of our message, The Secrets of Abundance. The Bible says that God oftentimes uses men as an instrument of justice, as an instrument of peace, kindness, love, patience, favor. Brethren, God is concerned about your growth. God is concerned about your growth. Viewers all over the world, God is concerned about your growth. Today, many are not growing because they fail to realize that their future is connected to people. Many deny their future from being reshaped because they never find joy or reason of helping others. Many denied their destiny from being reshaped because they never find joy or reason in releasing forgiveness. They never find joy or reason in settling differences. You may say you are in the business of giving and there is nothing to show for it. You may say, I've been helping the poor, but there is nothing to show for it. You may say, yeah, but I release forgiveness, but still, there's nothing to show for it. You may say, eh, I give everything I have for the poor, but there is nothing to show for it. Check the way and manner you give it. If you have not seen anything, check the way and manner you give it. Because when you give with pride and arrogance, you honor yourself and dishonor God, thereby magnifying yourself above your heavenly father. And that is why it's difficult to see the results. When you give with pride and arrogance, the Bible says we make ourselves creditor instead of debtor we are. Remember, we are all debtors, being sinners. God is our creditor, our provider. Tell your neighbor, God is concerned about your growth. God is concerned about your growth. God is concerned about our growth. Finally, brethren, let's turn our Bible to the book of 2 Corinthians, 
chapter 9. And let us take our reading from verses. But this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one give as he proposes in his heart, not grungily or of necessity. For God loves a cheerful giver. The Bible says, as children of God, when you release the seed in your hand, it may be seed of forgiveness. It may be seed of love. It may be compassion. The Lord promises to take the blessing in his hand and release it to your life. If you release the seed in your hand, brethren, the Lord promises to take the blessing in his hand and release it to your life. This is a divine principle of a bountiful harvest that the Lord has founded in all believers who are in their occupation of destiny. This is a divine principle of a bountiful harvest that the Lord has founded in all of us who are in our occupation of destiny. Remember, giving is not only in a monetary term. It may be your mercy. It may be your favor. It may be your forgiveness. It may be your care, your concern, your compassion. There are many people on the sick bed in the hospital. You visit them. Show them care. Show them love. Who knows? That might be what they need for their recovery. And who knows, that may be what is needed of you to discover your divine destiny. Whatever that is in your hand right now. Whatever that is in your hand right now is enough to create the future you desire. Tell your neighbor, whatever that is in my hand right now. Raise your hand and say, whatever that is in my hand right now is capable, is capable of changing the history of my life, is capable of changing the course of my life. Whether small or big, it doesn't matter. By doing this, brethren, you will discover who you are thereby. Unforgiveness causes us to ignore our offenders when they are in pain. Many a times we see those who hurt us. They are in trouble. We ignore them. It is not my business. Okay, you can see. He's reaping the, the fruits of his labor. Unforgiveness causes us to ignore our offenders when they are in pain, when they are in trouble. It retaliates and rejoices when others are hurt. I mean, it is hard. For those with unforgiveness in their hearts to release help, to give help to their offenders. But you know the Bible says it is more blessed, more rewarding to help those who hurt you, those who does not share the same faith with you, those who cannot even give you back. You can count how many times you have seen those who hurt you. You have seen your offenders in trouble and you ignore them. Don't be surprised when you eventually realize, perhaps too late, 
that it was Jesus himself whom you denied. Ask yourself, do I really love God? Let that question run in your heart. Do I really love God? How does the love of God function in a man who only thinks, walks with an empty and idle word? Ultimately, the Bible says we are called to respond to all human needs, for that is what love entails. This does not, however, mean that our care for the needy alone is enough to bring us to salvation. But the Bible says it forms the basis of judging the level of our kindness. Look into the other side. When your fellow brother is in trouble, is equal to rejecting Christ. Brethren, if you are waiting for a more convenient time to release forgiveness, if you are waiting for a more convenient time to help the weak, to help those who are in need, that time may never come. If you are waiting for the time that you have abundance, that time may never come. What we give out of lead to brethren means a lot to us. But the Bible says it attracts God's attention. What we give out of little means a lot to us. But the Bible says it attracts God's attention. I want to leave you with these thoughts in mind. Viewers all over the world. I want to leave you with this one thought in mind. You will reap the full harvest of whatever you sow, if only you persevere. Tell your neighbor, you will reap whatever you sow, if only you persevere. May the Lord bless his word. In the midst of your heart, may the Lord bless his word. In the midst of your heart, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus.